the process starts with character, right? It starts with story and character, and that drives everything else, because all the detail and explosions and fidelity we add on top of that is nothing if you don't believe in those characters and the story they're telling you. I think one of the first things we did when Kevin was talking to us about it was, okay, well, these are the characters we have. Who are the new people we want to introduce? The biggest of which was Atriox. <laughs> put a lot of effort into establishing a new enemy. Because you can have a great good guy, but he really needs to have an equal bad guy. A brute who can outthink you as well as outfight you physically is a very different kind of a threat. And so that's really where Atriox was born. He was often sent on suicide missions and he always returned. And that made him dangerous to the Covenant. So when we encounter him, he's at the crux of finding a way to amplify and strengthen that army. From a visual standpoint, Everything should look like it should hurt you or potentially kill you. We wanted to layer that on top of some of that recognizable Covenant technology. So lots of ramming spikes, lots of layered armor, things that, that spoke to a brute's uh, sensibilities and uh, aesthetic choices. And then we've also given him little trophies, little very subtle elements that kind of speak to maybe what his past has been. Like, you know, things that could have just been from somebody that he's dispatched in the past and decided to just keep as a trophy and make it part of his collection. But also the form from function, where armor is at, serves a role. You know, he would be more protected around the core, like his chest, and he's got a larger shoulder pad because he's got an augmented gauntlet. Like, this should feel like a bipedal tank. <laughs> I wanted to have a reason for you to fear him. I, and the best way to do that is have Isabel tell you who he is and why we need to run. Oh, Spartans, thank God. We have to get out of here. When we first meet Isabel, she shows up in a way that we haven't seen AIs behave in Halo before. She's freaked out. When we created Isabel, we wanted to make a different kind of AI. AIs are generally perfection. We wanted a flawed AI from the outset. We wanted her to be a little bit more rough around the edges. She's logistics, so she's, you know, kind of like the tank girl. Ripley from Aliens 2 is a big influence in that. I need her down there with me. Isabel. <laughs> Sorry, sir. After recent battle reports, you should have figured out that there are rules around here. I intend to break one. We had a real task set out for us in finding not only the person who will be Isabel, but what that voice is. And I think we couldn't have had a better actress for the job. Sir, yes sir. With the way that we shoot mocap, it has to be the same person who we're scanning for our character model. So this person not only has to look like the character, but has to act like the character and has to sound like the character. To get the likeness um, and fidelity that we really wanted, the technology demands that you essentially cast who you want to be that character. It's a, it's a creative choice, but it's also to showcase the, the best technology that's available out there. When it works, it works so well, and you just get everything at once, and you really breathe life into that character. It's almost like directing a movie, right? At the end of the day, I mean, cinematics has always been somewhat like that, but now you've actually got us in the studio directing these actors. The process has just changed so much. I really think those first cinematics of the original Halo Wars just kind of raised the bar for the industry as a whole. And that's what we're doing again. I think it's important not to miss, you know, the point that people love these characters that we're creating. And that requires us spending time and effort making sure that they're well-rounded and, and real. From the first word on the page to the first design we draw, to the actors that breathe life into them, to the final lighting and animation pass that we do here. Every single piece needs to fall into place. There's a lot of people out there that expect a lot from this franchise. That to me is the most exciting thing when you are putting a face to a brand new character. You're creating a new digital life, which is, is pretty awesome.